Hi, I'm Emma and I'm a fourth year PhD student at my dream university. Okay, we got through all that in every video. I want to do another PhD hack slash PhD transparency video telling you guys about how, very specifically how, to email potential PhD advisors. The reason why I'm making this video is a good time now to start reaching out to advisors October slash before Thanksgiving, before holidays get here, before they're traveling, before final exams. October, I think, is the perfect, perfect, perfect month to start reaching out to advisors, potential advisors to schools you are applying to and asking if you can like chat with them or just getting your name on their radar so that way when you apply, it's not, your name is very familiar with them. But also, I am so freaking pissed. Hence, one of my favorite laptop stickers. For the past couple of months, I have been seeing a lot of faculty members exercise their First Amendment rights, as we all should, and expressing their frustrations about getting emails from students that are very heavily reliant on ChatGPT. These students are really, really just trying their best to take advantage of resources to get into an environment that people kind of like you are still trying to keep closed off. But I am pro AI as far as using it to edit your original work, not to create work for you. And that goes for anything, for emails, for writing, for ideas, for brainstorming. I don't think ChatGTP should be creating ideas for you. I don't, I don't think that's, that's good, but I do think it can really help you edit your ideas and just make it better, improve on it. With that being said, before I get into the details of formatting the email to a potential advisor, just write out, write out what you wanna say. Um, open your laptop, go to the computer, write down, just mind dump everything that you wanna say. And then ask ChatGPT to edit it, to be more clear and concise and formatted to relate to someone an email of interest in applying to the department. Okay, now on to the good stuff. So as you guys know, I'm here to help you guys stand out before you submit your applications and hopefully get a response back. I think the first important question you should ask is, um, should you contact advisors? And if so, how? Not every discipline requires you or even recommends that you reach out to advisors. There are some disciplines where um, you will be in labs or rotations, clinicals, I think they're called, um, and you are mandated to be under X professor for X weeks and then you guys like all switch. Like it's a rotation of professors and their labs for months to I guess a year. And then after that, you can pick a professor or I think they pick you. I don't know, it really varies. But for my field of earth sciences, we don't have lab rotations. We are expected to kind of have in mind who we want to work under. Um, and what we want to do working under them relating to like their research expertise. So how do you want to format this email? I actually have an old email up from August 2020 that I sent to a professor, a professor that I chose not to work under, and I'll explain why later. But how do you want to format this email? So the first sentence after your professional greeting, hello, or dear so-and-so, get straight to the point. Why are you emailing me? Straight to the point. That first sentence should be, this is why I'm emailing you. So for my template, my name is Emma, last name, and I'm interested in applying to university's name, department name, program, master's, educational, or master's professional, PhD, for fall 2025, fall 2026, spring 2020, whatever, admission. That's it, first sentence, straight to the point. I don't wanna read the email and it says, hello, my name is Sarah and I am interested in talking to you because I'm actually researching so-and-so and for the past five years, I've been researching. No, why, why are you emailing me? What, what, explain what you want from them. My name is blank and I want to learn more about applying to this university's program for this professional degree for this semester year admission. Okay, that's the first thing. Now I use my second sentence to explain that I graduated with my master's in science from this school in this program and I have this certification as well. Like you can do that. I don't think it's really necessary um, because I also recommend or I think people know to include like your CV or your resume. So I don't think that second sentence is necessary, but it's, 
if you want to, but I definitely don't think it's necessary because remember, we want to be concise and we want to be straight to the point. We're not sending these professors a whole paragraph. Okay, so the next sentence, your second or third sentence, should go straight into your research, your expertise, what you plan to do working under them, if you were to work under them. And that should ideally be one or two sentences. So it sounds like a lot, like, oh, I want to write a whole paragraph. Don't write a whole paragraph. They're not reading all that. They're not reading all that. They will read all that in your application. Mine was two sentences. My master's research focused on X, Y, Z in this state, period. For my PhD, I want to continue studies on X, Y, Z in X, Y, Z using X, Y, Z, period. What, why are you emailing me the first thing? Why are you emailing me? What do you want? What do you want to do? What have you already done? What do you want to do? Now, this next sentence or even new paragraph is a little bit where you can freestyle with it. Um, I use the next couple of sentences to really kiss some butt. You know, this is the time where I was like, okay, I gave you three senses about me. Let me give you three senses about you, <laughs> okay? Let me, let, me, let, me rub your, let me rub your knee a little bit. Do you like that? Do you like that, baby? Because advisors, oh my gosh, these faculty in academia, they just, they just love to have, they have big heads and they love to have big heads. So I'm looking at it now and I would definitely reword this, but I said, I was drawn to your lab because I found your page, which I think was terrible to say. I should not have not said that. Um, I think your, reach, your research interests are um, closely aligned to what I have researched, and I'd like the opportunity to work with you and expand on this subject. I also think that was really terribly worded, but what I would say now instead, what I plan to contribute. So I know that I already said in the previous sentences, you're saying what you want to do or what you have and what you want to do. But I would also include another sentence after saying like, I read this literature about your lab researching why the sky is blue in the world. The next sentence would say, I am interested on expanding on that topic, on that subject and researching how different atmospheric conditions, humidity, pollution, different altitudes, how that influences the color of the sky. So just one sentence about like a little bit more about how you plan to contribute. And even if it's like you don't have a clear idea, you can make it vague, but just show that, show that you're trying to piggyback off an idea that the lab is doing. So that way it kind of just emphasizes that your research interests are aligned with their research. The, the work that the lab does, excuse me. Your last sentence should be, here's my resume or CV for your reference. I look forward to hearing from you and I hope we have the chance to speak about research in the future. That's it. What is that, five, six sentences? There's no need to add a paragraph, there's no need. There's really no need, you guys. I'm so serious, I'm sorry. I know I keep saying that, but there's no need. And there's no need to really even use chat GPT because let's see what happens. I'm gonna read to you guys what happens when I put in for the ChatGPT to write me an email. So I asked ChatGPT to write an email to a PhD professor I'm interested in applying to their PhD program. First of all, the subject inquiry about PhD program opportunities, no, mm -mm. no, no. Dear professor, that's, that's perfect. I hope this message finds you well, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. My name is so-and-so and I'm interested in applying to your PhD program in blank, blank, blank. Okay, but for what year? Like when? You're not very specific about that. After reviewing your research on specific topics or projects, I'm excited about the possibility of cont contributing to your work. What? See, if I were a professor, although I would not go on social media and talk about this student, I would not be interested in reading it because it's just so vague. I would love the opportunity to discuss my background and research interests with you, as well as any potential openings in your lab for the upcoming academic year. But what do you do? But what do you do? Your expertise in blank aligns closely with my aspirations. What are your aspirations? What do I do? Like, this is terrible. So yeah, don't use ChatGPT. I also want to emphasize, um, I want to read from a undisclosed social media post from a faculty member who's not at my university. I don't know where this person's at. Um, who was expressing how they have deleted an ad calling for graduate students because they had hundreds of emails about the position, but a lot of the emails failed to address why, why his lab. 
and were very heavily AI generated. I think this is a really great post and I wish I could include screenshots, but like I said, undisclosed. So I'm going to read just really quickly um, what an actual faculty member is saying, of the mistakes that they're seeing in these emails that I'm trying to help you guys create to get into these programs. One mistake, not signing a paper I am first or corresponding author on. Yeah, that's crazy. Two, claiming expertise in the exact topic or a very broad topic but your CV shows no related experience. That's also very terrible. That is that is scamming, that is lying. Three, copy and paste emails with no personalization. Oh, I forgot to talk to y'all about that. Let's talk about that really quick. I was gonna include it in my tips, so let's get to that now. Tips, here are some tips. Make your email personable. Yes, research fit is priority. But here's the secret. Um, People who think they're all that, people who are big headed, people who have prestige, uh, they're a lot nicer to people who they can relate to. It's so unfair, it's so vain, but it's true. But make it personable. Um, this is not to be confused with a statement of purpose or a diversity statement, make it personable. This faculty member also notes overselling. I don't expect you to be an expert and shouldn't be for a PhD position. I agree with that. I tell you guys, be delusional. I don't say lie and say that you are when you're not or pretend to be somebody you are that you're not or pretend to know why the world spins. I just said be delusional. Being delusional is saying, hey, let's go grab coffee and talk about this. <laughs> You could, I mean, that is a little creepy, but I wouldn't do it, but that's a little delusional. Like, let's go grab some coffee and catch up about this. <laughs> Only if the faculty member likes coffee. I'm saying embrace your big dreams. Embrace the, you know, research idea that you are so, so excited to tackle when you think about, you know, yourself getting accepted into this graduate program and how your significance to science or whatever field you're in is going to be a huge, contribution even if it is a small research because all of our research in a larger aspect is very very small it's still a huge contribution to science in the long run so you're visualizing yourself being delusional being successful being accepted into this graduate program you know contributing this science publishing this research giving these conference talks being invited being invited to give talks in the coming years that's that's what i'm saying um second tip don't force to meet some, some professors don't want to meet, they don't have the time to meet, um, they don't even probably want to do Zoom, so they may just want to answer everything through email. This is just an email to get your name known. It's not an email that's saying like, hey, I'm going to get accepted. It's an email to get your name known, so that way when you submit your application, like I said, it's a known name. Oh, that's, that name's familiar. I've, I've seen that name before. And that's why I end the emails with, like I said, I hope we have a chance to speak about this more in the future. But don't force them to meet. You can ask to meet, but if they respond to your email with no, like, yeah, let's meet, don't force it. Don't force it. The third and final tip is don't feel discouraged if you do not get a response. Um, my hopes and dreams are that all of you guys will get a response, but that's simply not the case and it's for a variety of reasons. Do not let it be a reflection of yourself. Do not think, oh, it's because of the email I sent or oh, it's because I didn't do this. Out of the 10 plus emails that I sent to professors when I was applying to graduate school, two of them did not respond to me and that is separate from the other two who told me thank you but no thank you. So I had two professors who told me no, and then I had another two who just never responded to me at all. Do not feel discouraged. Um, that's a topic for a different day though, but those are the three tips that I would give when we think about writing these emails to professors. So, to end this video, it's October, middle of October. Send that email, it takes like 15 minutes for you to mine dump, and then five minutes for ChatGP to edit it. Send those emails out before the end of October. Um, don't send them the week of Thanksgiving. Don't. I mean, you can. I'm not gonna tell you what to do and what not to do, but don't say I didn't help you when you send out an email the week of Thanksgiving and you don't hear nothing back. Don't say I didn't try to help you when you submit your application October 31st. You wanna send an email to me in February. I tried to help you, but I think October is a great time to send out those emails and ask professors. Well, not ask professors, but one to get your name in the know to see potentially if they're down to me. So I hope that helps you guys. I have my, my also my template that I used 
from 2020 in my description box. Do not copy and paste it, edit it, change it. <laughs> Add your own personal bedazzle in there, your own expertise. But it's in the description box for you guys to use below. I hope this video helps and I'll see you guys next time.